Hello everyone, it's Joseph from Vine and Table uh, with our continuing series called How to Cocktail. Uh, today we're going to do a cocktail you may not be familiar with, it's called El Diablo. Um, so I stopped by a buddy of mine's house on the way home from work the other day. Um, him and his wife had invited me over a couple times and I had been uh, uh, extremely tardy in taking him up on the offer. Uh, and he got the book, uh, he got the, uh, the recipe from a book called uh, Drinking Distilled, a User's Manual. So it's by uh, Jeffrey Morgan Tyler, um, who is a, uh, a retired bartender, I think out of Portland. Um, and I think even if you didn't, like even if you don't drink, you would enjoy this book. It's almost like a how-to uh, uh, how book on life and how not to be a jerk. Um, but he, uh, uh, and if, if I didn't give a shout out to my buddy Dave Morgan, he, he picked me up a copy of this. Um, so we're going to be making a cocktail out of his, this that he made, uh, made for me the other day. It was absolutely delicious. Uh, as I mentioned, it's called El Diablo, um, and it is tequila based. So um, as I've said numerous times in the past, whenever I do tequila, I will help you spend as much money as you want. But when I'm making a cocktail, I don't think you need to spend a ton of money. This is my absolute best value proposition tequila. Um, it's 100% blue agave, uh, Cimarron, uh, Blanco tequila, it's $24.99 and it's a liter bottle. Um, and I will stack that up against, you could taste that blind against Patron and be like, ah, I might, I might prefer this. Super delicious. Also, one of the ingredients is lime juice. Um, old bartender trick. Um, whenever you go into a, a bar and, and the bartender's setting up, he or she will most likely, the first thing they will do is, is juice all their citrus fruit first. Um, and the reason behind that is, is as that, uh, this is a, a one shift preparation for a bartender, at least you do it by the shift. But uh, although I've been known to keep it in my refrigerator for a couple days, um, as that juice oxidizes, it loses a little bit of the harsh edge. So if you're going to be making cocktails with any kind of citrus juice, uh, and there's actually chemical reasons for this, um, but uh, uh, make it juice the, the, the citrus an hour or two ahead, and it really makes a better cocktail. Um, so with that being said, let's get started. Um, so we have um, one and a quarter ounce of Blanco tequila. And whenever I'm making cocktails, especially for the first time, I mean, it's like baking. Um, it's a craft and it is important to get the ratio right. So when, you know, bartenders first start bartending, they think they're hooking people up by giving them a strong pour. And yeah, they might be getting them drunk faster, but they're ruining their drinks. So one and a quarter ounce of tequila, um, three quarters ounce, three quarters ounce uh, lime juice, And then uh, you've seen me make cocktails with this before. This is a rich, simple syrup. Um, so the, the, basically you can buy this here or you can make it yourself. Uh, when you make a simple syrup, it is um, one part sugar and one part uh, water. And so you heat the water up, dissolve the sugar in it, and then you can chill it and keep it in your refrigerator for a while. Um, I usually put it in a squeeze bottle when I'm working behind a bar. Uh, and the difference here is um, with a rich syrup, it's two to one. So it's two parts sugar to one part, um, one part water. And it gives a, a little sweeter, but a little more viscous mouthfeel. It really changes the character of the drink to use a rich syrup. Um, generally, as a rule of thumb, when I make uh, cocktails, if that is actually Dimamara, so if I was doing this behind the bar uh, in a restaurant, I would actually make a rich, simple syrup um, with uh, cane sugar. Um, so my general rule of thumb is clear drink, white sugar, dark drink, dark sugar. Um, but this is what we have here today at the shop and I didn't want to bring in my little uh, uh, my little heater and, and make it all from scratch because I'm lazy. Um, and then uh, one quarter ounce of cream de cassis. And this cocktail is all about balance. So the cream de cassis is pretty sweet and it really tones down the acidity of the lime juice. Um, in a perfect world, you would have uh, your Collins glasses, 
um, in a freezer or filled with ice water. <laughs> Bailey on my cheese and floss. <laughs> so you can either shake this or stir it, but you definitely do want to get a little bit of time in the in the shaker to uh, to let that dilute just a, just a bit. And then using my Hawthorne strainer to pour that into my pre-chilled glass. Wink, wink, nod, nod. And then you will garnish, oh, wait. One more ingredient and then two ounces of ginger beer. And it is just absolutely delightful, refreshing, Cocktail, great for the summer, but we had it just the other day and it was delicious. Uh, you don't want to put the ginger beer in before you uh, before you shake it um, because it's carbonated and you'll end up with a mess on your hands. Uh, if you enjoy this uh, this cocktail series, a uh, little lime wheel to garnish, uh, and there you have it. If you enjoy this cocktail series, make sure you like this video and share it to all your friends on whatever platform you're watching it on, Instagram or Facebook. Uh, hope you're all staying safe and uh, cheers. No, you know.